Hi. Recently, I came across a YouTube channel called S. Friedrich Video Graphics that specializes in Resolve tutorials. It's an excellent channel and I highly recommend that you subscribe to. It's linked in the description or you can click on the little card that's currently displayed in the upper right corner of this video right now. The first video on this channel that I saw was this one and I just loved his design for the thumbnail and knew immediately that he had used Resolve and the Text Plus tool to create the thumbnail. Sebastian, the author of that video, very graciously gave me permission to use his design to create this tutorial on using the Text Plus tool in Resolve. Normally, I use a website called PhotoP to create thumbnails. It's a web-based clone of Photoshop. The only real limitation with it is that you can't add fonts, so you're restricted to its built-in selection of fonts. I'll link to the site in the description as well. Recently, I've started to create my YouTube thumbnails more and more in Resolve itself, and to that end, we're going to recreate Sebastian's thumbnail with a few changes of my own added in, and then we'll animate it as a simple video intro. In the description of this video is a link to a zip file on my website and it contains the Resolve logo, some time-lapse cloud footage, a still image for our background, and some sound effect files. You can right mouse click on the link in the description and do a save as and then unzip the file so you can recreate this exact project and follow along. I should also mention that you can do this in any version of Resolve from version 15 forward. It will also work in both the paid and free versions of the application on Mac or Windows. This is what the final result will look like so you know what we're headed towards here. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's jump right in. I'll start a new project. I'll do 1920 resolution at 24 frames per second, as you can see in the settings here. I'll open the media pool. I'll add some media. This background image I downloaded from unsplash.com. They have tons of awesome free still images that you can use in your projects. They're also linked in the description. I'll also add a Resolve logo that I got from a Google image search. I like the mountains, but I want to replace the sky with something more dramatic, so I have this time lapse of storm clouds that I shot a few years ago, so I'll add that to the media pool as well. And finally, we have three sound effect files that we'll need, so I'll add these into the media pool. I'll create a new timeline using the still image. It'll default to a duration of five seconds, and that's fine for what we're gonna do here today. I'll open the inspector with the image in the timeline selected. I'm gonna zoom it in a bit, so I click on the proportional link between the X and Y, set my X to 2.19, and my Y to 1.54, like so. Now I go over to the color page and mask out the sky. I zoom out a bit so I can extend the mask past the edges of the image. I'll speed this up in the edit so that you don't have to watch me stumbling through this. I add a bit of edge feathering with soft one set to 1.02 and outside set to 1.28. Since it's just a still, no need to do any tracking or anything. Now I add an alpha output to the node graph and connect the blue output of the node to the new alpha output so that we get transparency on the edit page. I need to invert the mass so that the sky is removed but not the mountains. I hit Option S on my Mac or Alt S on Windows to add a new serial node. I'll go to the Curves pane and pull the mids down a bit as I want to darken the mids in the mountains to add a bit more contrast between the image and the text elements that we're going to add. Back on the edit page, I'll move the background image up to track 2 by clicking and dragging it up with the shift key to lock its horizontal position as I move it. I have this time-lapse cloud footage, so I'll put it on the bottom track, and now we have a much more dramatic skyline. Okay, our first graphic element is the Resolve logo. I'll drag and drop it onto track 3 here like this. I'll close the media pool for the moment, click on the logo to make sure it's the active element in the inspector. Under the the linked zoom control will set it to 0.34. 
Position X will set to 572 and Y we will set to 325 and rotation will set to 5.8. Okay, that takes care of the Resolve logo. I'll close the inspector and open the effects pane. In the effects pane, I go to the titles category and choose Text Plus. Text Plus is an enhanced text tool that was created using Fusion, but we won't need to deal with Fusion to use this as you'll see. I'll drop this text item up onto track four like this. I can close the effects panel for now and open the inspector. For the text content, we'll set it to styles in all caps. I'll set the typeface to Arial Black so we get a nice thick font for this. I'll set the size to be 0.25. Over on the Settings pane under Transform, I'll unlink the X and Y on Zoom and set the Zoom's Y or vertical value to be 1.13. I'll set the Rotation Control to be 4.7 to tilt the text slightly. I'll set the X position to 20 and the Y position to minus 338. Clicking back on the title pane, I'll click on the shading category. Under shading elements, I'll click on the select element option and select four and click enabled. This element gives us the border around the text. Below this section, we have properties, and in this section, I'll set the Extend Horizontal to 0.35 and Extend Vertical to minus 0.5. We'll round the corner slightly by using a value of 0.079. Under Type, we'll select Gradient. This gives us a two gradient control for this, but I want a third one in the middle to give finer control, so I click in the middle of this bar to create that. Clicking on the leftmost arrow, its position on the bar is set to 0.11. Clicking on the color patch for it, I'll set the color to an RGB value of 0B, 0B, 0D. On the middle gradient control, I click to select it and set its position to be 0.766. I click on its color tab and set the RGB to 58585B. And finally, the rightmost arrow is clicked and its position is set to 1. And clicking on the color, I set that to 727374. And finally, the mapping angle is set to 90 to make it run from left to right across the text. And mapping level is set to text. Now I'll scroll back up to Select Element and set the drop down to 1. It'll be enabled by default as this is the text color shader. Under Properties, the type will already be set to solid. Move the R, G, and B sliders over to 0. Then move the alpha over to 0 as well, and this will make our text transparent. Okay, that finishes the Styles element. On to the Easy Text element, as in the text element that will spell out easy. <laughs> I close the inspector for a moment and open the effects pane and get the text plus tool from the title section as we did before. Even though it's the topmost element in our graphic, I'll put it on track five. Track six will get our text element that overlays the other two text items as you'll see. Closing the effects pane, I open the inspector with our new text plus element in the timeline selected. In the text box, I type all caps, easy. For these last two text items, we'll not be using that border shader, it's only for the styles part of the composition. Again, I'll set the typeface to Arial Black so we get a nice thick font. I'll set the size to be 0.49. Over on the Settings pane under Transform, I will unlink the X and Y on Zoom and set the X Zoom value to 0.75 and the Y value to be 0.89. I'll set the Rotation Control to be 5.8 to tilt the text slightly more than the last one. I'll set the X position to minus 61 and the Y position to 261. Clicking back on the title pane, I will select the shading category. Under the shading elements, the select element dropdown should already be set to one and enabled should already be checked. Under properties, we'll set the type to gradient once again. Again, I will click in the middle of the bar to create another gradient control like this. I'll click on the center gradient control arrow and set its position value to 0.11. Clicking on the color patch, I set the RGB value to 9B, 
A0A2. Now clicking on the leftmost gradient control arrow, I'll set its position value to zero and its color value to DA, DB, DE. Clicking on the rightmost gradient control arrow, I'll set its position value to 0 0.7064 and its color value to 0F, 0F, 0F. Now we set the gradient mapping angle to 90 so it extends from left to right instead of top to bottom. The mapping level is set to line. Back up at the top, set the select element drop down to 2 and click the enabled checkbox. This element allows us to put a stroke on the text and that will help it stand out from the background a bit. Under properties, we will set the thickness to 0 0.005. Below this, we'll pull the RGB red slider over to zero to make our stroke black like so. This gives us a nice, thin, elegant outline to our text that helps it pop. Okay, that finishes the easy element. Now on to the text plus text element as in the text element that will spell out text plus. I close the inspector for a moment and open the effects pane and get the text plus tool from the title section as we did before. As the middle element, it's going to overlay on top of the other two text plus elements. So it'll go on the topmost track here at track six. Closing the effects pane, I open the inspector window with our new text plus element in the timeline selected. In the text box, I type all caps, text plus. We set the typeface to Arial Black again. Set the size to be 0.35. Over on the settings pane under transform, I'll unlink the X and Y on zoom and set the X zoom value to 0.85 and the Y value to be 1.06. I'll set the X position to minus 11 and the Y position to minus 41. We'll set the rotation control to be 4.7 to tilt it slightly. Clicking back on the title pane, I'll click on the shading category. Under the shading elements, the select element dropdown should already be set to one and enabled should already be checked. Under properties, we will set the type to gradient again. Now clicking on the leftmost gradient control arrow, I'll set its position value to 0.35 and its color value to 776656. Clicking on the rightmost gradient control arrow, I'll set its position value to 0 0.935 and its color value to FFFFF. Now we'll set the gradient mapping angle to 90 so it extends from left to right instead of top to bottom. And again, the mapping level is set to line. Clicking back on our styles element in the timeline and looking at the shader pane again, I wanted to point out a few items. If we click the select element dropdown, we get a list of eight possible elements. Any that are currently enabled have an asterisk next to them. For text plus, there are actually only four that are defined. One is the text color or shading, such as the gradients that we used. Two is the stroke or outline on the text. Three is a drop shadow control. And four is the background box element that we used here. The only one of these elements that we didn't use is the drop shadow, number three. What I found is that the open effects drop shadow control is a much better effect for doing a drop shadow on text or any element really. Let's close the inspector and open the effects pane. Under the open effects category, we scroll down in the list until we get to the resolve FX stylized section and towards the top of that section is drop shadow. So we click and drag and drop it onto our styles text plus element. I'll also want it on the text plus text element, so I'll add it to that now since we're in here. Now I close the effects, click on the styles element again, open the inspector at the top, I click on the effects pane so we can adjust the controls of the drop shadow. In the drop shadow controls, I'll set the shadow strength to 0.5, 
the drop angle to 38, the distance to 0 0.02, and the blur to 0.3. The color is already black by default, which is what we want. Now I'll click on the text plus element at the top and set the drop shadow values to strength at 0.4, angle at 38, distance at 0 0.01, and blur to zero. Okay, that's it for setting all of our visuals. There's one thing that bugs me about the text plus control and that is it doesn't indicate what the text is that is displayed. The regular text element will show you what the text is that it has assigned to it in the time line like this so you could see it. So what I do to overcome this issue is I click on the element, put the playhead around the middle of it, and press the M key, and this creates a clip-based marker. Now in the marker properties, I can put the text that this element contains like so. I do this for each element, then when I need to know what it says, I just hover the mouse over the marker and it shows me what the text is. Okay, at this point we're done with our static graphic. We can use this as a thumbnail as I did for this video, but we could also animate it, add some sound effects to it, and add it to our video as an intro. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll click on the middle element that displays easy so we can animate its vertical position. Pressing the home key to put the playhead at the start of the timeline, I click on settings in the inspector. I'll set the Y position value to 774 and click on the keyframe diamond. At the upper right of your timeline is a time code value. We'll click on it to edit it and put in a value of 5. Now we set our Y position to 271 and it creates a keyframe for us as you can see by the diamond changing to orange. I click in the timeline pane to select it, hit the home key and press space to play, and there we have our animation. Clicking on our bottom most text plus element to make it active in the inspector. I'll click on the time code above the viewer again and put in a value of 0 colon 10. On the position Y value, we enter minus 853 and click on the keyframe diamond to create our keyframe. In the time code window at the top, we enter a value of 15. Now on the Y position value, we enter minus 338. This creates our keyframe for us. Again, I click in the timeline pane to select it, hit the home key and press space to have a look. Okay, that looks good. Our penultimate item to animate here is the middle text plus that's on the topmost track. I click on it to bring it up in the inspector. In the timeline window, I'll type 0 colon 2 2. On the X position, I'll put a value of minus 1541 and click the keyframe diamond. Clicking in the timeline pane, I'll press the right arrow key twice, and now I'll enter an X position of minus 11. Clicking in the timeline pane, I press the right arrow again twice and enter a new X position of 151. Clicking in the timeline pane again, I press the right arrow twice yet again. Set the X value to minus 168. Click in the timeline pane again and press the right arrow key five more times. And then set the X position to minus 11 again. Again, I click in the timeline pane to select it. I hit the home key and press space and check the results. It should look like what you see here. Okay, the final element to animate is the Resolve logo and will animate its opacity or visibility. In the time code box in the upper right, enter a value of 1 colon 2 3. Once you've done that, click on the Resolve logo element in the timeline and go into the inspector. Scroll down to the composite section, set Set opacity to zero and click the keyframe diamond. Now in the time code box, enter a value of 2 colon 1 2. Then in the inspector, set the opacity to 100% for the resolve logo. Click in the timeline pane, press home, and then space to play back your masterpiece. Okay, we're almost done. We just need to add our sound effects. These will really make the difference between something that looks okay to something that's very cool. 
We have three sound effect files that we will use to punch up this animation. The three files are Whoosh Short, Whoosh Medium, and Zap01. With the timeline selected, press Shift-Z and ensure that you can see the entire timeline. Close the inspector and open the media pool. Drag and drop the Whoosh Short sound onto Audio Track 1 or A1. Make sure it's butted up to the left end of the track. On the left side track header, right mouse click and change the track type to be Mono. We'll need to be able to see the waveform in the audio files. If your audio file looks small and you don't see a waveform, ensure that you have waveform view enabled using this little menu at the upper left of the timeline. Under audio view options, make sure that the leftmost option is selected. If you still can't see a waveform, hover your mouse over the audio element in A1 and hold shift while you scroll the mouse wheel up and this will zoom the track vertically until you can see the waveform. Now click in the timeline pane, press the home button and the space bar and our first element should have a nice satisfying whoosh when it comes onto the screen. Press the home button. Now on the bottom most text plus element, click the little diamond at the far right to open the keyframe window. By doing this, we can position our audio with the keyframes easily. Notice the two keyframe indicators in the track window. We want to place the audio effect so that the peak of its waveform is centered between these two keyframes. Drag and drop the whoosh short file from the media page on track A1 like you did before, but put it close closer to the keyframes that are now displayed. Try to center it between them. If the snapping action is fighting you, press N to turn it off, then move the audio into place. Then you can press N again to re-enable snapping. Click in the timeline pane, press home, hit space, and review it. If you're happy with it, then click that same diamond on the right of the text plus element to close the keyframe window. Now click on the topmost text plus element in the timeline. We already did the middle one when we added the very first whoosh. Click the keyframe diamond on the right bottom of the text plus element to open the keyframe window for that element. Notice there are five keyframes, four close together and one at the right that is farther apart. Drag the whoosh medium into the A1 track so that its peak is between the rightmost keyframe and its neighbor to the left like this. Again, if snapping is fighting with you, press N and turn it off to set your position, then N to restore it back on if you like. Click in the timeline pane, press home, press space, and review. If you're happy with it, click that diamond again and close the keyframe window. Now on track V3 or video 3, we have our logo that fades up. We have a different sound for that element. Go ahead and open the keyframe window for the Resolve logo. Drag and drop the Zap01 so that it starts at the first keyframe in the Resolve logo keyframe window. Click in the timeline pane, press home and space, playback and see the final product. Since our clouds are time-lapse, they add some movement to the clip as well. If you're happy with it, output it as you see fit. You're done. Okay, I hope this video helps someone out there. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, please click the like as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.